Okay, it's 5.30, so I'll call to order the Executive Committee meeting for August 25, 2020. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? We are in compliance. The agenda is posted on August 24th at 2019. August 24th, thank you. Okay, next item of business is approval of minutes for the August 4th, 2020 Executive Committee meeting. Supervisor Obler? I'll move for approval, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Obler. Is there a second? Support. Thank you, Supervisor Procheck. Under discussion? Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor of the minutes for the August 4, 2020 Executive Committee meeting say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item is consideration of resolution number 11, the 2021 five year capital plan. I'll Supervisor Gehring? Is there a second? I'll support that. Thank Mr. you, Supervisor Obler. Under discussion? Is there any questions on it? Any changes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of the resolution number 11, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consideration of resolution number 12, approving permanent easement for Village of Kohler Sewer Interceptor at the Erie Avenue Old Plank Road Trailhead. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Support. Supervisor Abler? Supported. Thank you, Supervisor Abler. Under discussion? I'll read the information. Okay, very good. All those in favor of resolution number 11, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 12. Motion carried. Okay, consideration of ordinance number three, creating section 1009 of disease control, providing for enforcement of public health orders and legislative oversight. Administrator Payne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see such a nice turnout for our executive committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the Health and Human Services Committee recommended the proposed disease control ordinance providing for enforcement of public health orders and legislative oversight. And there were four predominant objectives. First, to be transparent about our COVID-19 emergency planning, to be better prepared if we experience a significant surge in COVID patients and if our local hospitals are on the brink of being overrun. The second objective was to be working more in collaboration. That's been our secret to success, not only on the county board, but th throughout Sheboygan County. And the proposed ordinance adds the oversight of the county board executive and finance, executive and health and human services committee, providing more opportunity for input. Thirdly, we changed the enforcement provision. We expanded enforcement and penalty provision, provisions to have less onerous options that, than what are currently in state law. In addition, we don't want to tie the hands of our law enforcement officers or our state district attorney with greater responsibilities. They are all stretched so thin as it is now, and we certainly didn't want to give them even additional responsibility. And then finally, we specifically reference businesses, and although most businesses, I mean so many businesses, are leading by example in Sheboygan County. They're one of the keys to why we've kept COVID in check. If a business didn't comply with a countywide public health order, if we needed to intervene, just as we do now, if restaurants aren't preparing food in sanitary conditions, we built that in. Our objective was to prepare for an emergency, to be transparent, and to work in collaboration, and to provide our county with the tools we need to better serve this community. Those were the intentions. We hoped when we were preparing this ordinance that it would never be needed. If it was passed, nothing would immediately change. And of course, we hope it's never going to be needed. At the county board meeting, it was introduced last week. Last week. And sadly, there has been so much misinformation 
on Facebook and being circulated about this proposed ordinance. I've never seen anything like it in my career. Yet, amongst all this misinformation, we heard some really helpful feedback. We got some really good input from the community, and we appreciate that input, and we made changes. So, on the executive committee obviously received this, as did the county board, and I think the Sheboygan Press actually built this into one of their online articles so the public could see it. The feedback we received was predominantly associated with three areas. Give us a little better sense of what the intentions are of this proposed ordinance. Why, why are you coming forward with this? The hospitals aren't overrun. We're keeping COVID largely in check. What's the purpose of this? And again, it's about emergency planning. It's about being transparent. So we built into the whereas statements, kind of setting the stage for this, that we were concerned about if things get worse, that we're best prepared. We specifically referenced the hospitals that we've been collaborating with and getting information on what it would look like if their ICU beds or their COVID-dedicated medical surgical beds became overrun. We sought their input. Hospitals were directly involved with this discussion. We specifically mentioned that if 50% or more are filled with COVID-related patients, 50% or more, that would be a trigger that we will likely need to do more in our community to slow down the surge. So again, seeking to be transparent, communicate with the public what we're looking at, what the triggers are, and what we'll do. We built in checks and balances that currently aren't in state law. Right now, our public health officer could put out a countywide order. She hasn't done that to date. She has no interest or desire to do it going forward, but she has that authority under current state law. I'll bet you about 50% of the emails and phone calls I received, there was a comment or you know, a written comment or voice message or people I talked to that we don't want one unelected person to have this, all, all this authority. That's kind of the irony of the proposed ordinance. We hear you. And we had built in the oversight of the Health and Human Services Committee and the Executive Committee, two very important committees of the overall nine that make up the county board. We changed that and built in county board because we had a few people say, well, these are just two committees and that's not the full board. So we built that in, we made that change. And then the third thing we did is we struck businesses entirely. We just pulled that out. And I get that. I, I get that it was a lightning rod to some people and it was a little unclear just when that would be implemented or how that would work. And with all the angst and everything that people are feeling, I can appreciate why that was a sensitivity. So we completely removed it. So those were the three changes we made that are before the executive committee this evening. Of course, with all that said, Unfortunately, this has become a very emotionally charged and political issue. And as you know, some people are using it to voice all sorts of frustrations, regardless of they're in the ordinance or not. With all the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19, People are understandably hurting, frustrated, and fearful. And this proposed ordinance was contributing to that angst. That certainly was not our intention, but it is. Sheboygan County has the responsibility to protect the health and safety of our community. Public health is just one of a number of divisions in our Health and Human Services Department that do incredible work helping people in need. Our law enforcement officers do incredible work for this community. Our planning department, protecting our water quality. Our job, our responsibility is to protect the health and safety of this community. And though I know this proposed ordinance was prepared with the best of the intentions, I can look in the mirror and I am proud of the collaboration and teamwork that went into it. I'm fine with it. I know we had good intentions. 
But I think at this time in our community, our state, our country, we all need to be listening more, striving to be more mindful, kind, and civil to one another. I raised my family in Sheboygan County. My parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, born and raised in Sheboygan County. My roots from here run deep, as I know they do with so many of you. And what's happening right now, I don't know if any of us are used to this. I know I'm not. There's a lot of pain and angst, and we are all feeling it. So right now, I think these objectives are more important than the proposed ordinance. To this end, after a lot of input, thoughtful discussion with Chairman Koch, we recommend that the executive committee move to file ordinance number three, file it with the clerk, with the amendments as shown, we've made some improvements based on input, so those amendments would be part of it, but the recommendation would be to file it. In other words, filing with the clerk means the executive committee is recommending to the county board the ordinance not be approved, that it not go forward. Next month, the county board will get back together. It'll go to the full board, just as any ordinance or resolution does. It's generally always a two county board process, two committee process, and the county board will vote on that. My bet is with the executive committee's support for a motion such as this, my bet is the county board will file it, and that will be the end of this. So I want to thank everyone for their input, but I, would, I want to again restate what I just said about all of us pulling together to fight COVID and pulling together to be kind and patient and empathetic to one another, our neighbors, our friends. We are better than I think other communities who can't treat one another with respect or aren't civil. That isn't Sheboygan County. That's not the Sheboygan County I know. So I hope everybody uh, can support this decision tonight. I hope that it will be supported at the county board next month. And we do appreciate the input that we received and we've been listening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Administrator Pan. So, is Supervisor Obler, is there a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to file ordinance number three with the extended changes that have been made to this document by Thank Council. you, Supervisor Adler. Uh, Supervisor Ziegelbauer? I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Under discussion? Is there any discussion? Any from the other supervisors? Okay, seeing no discussion, all those in favor of filing ordinance number three signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consideration of resolution reaffirming membership in Bay Fort, Wisconsin Bay Workforce Development Area Consortium and approval of amended consortium agreement. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Is there a second? Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. I will second the motion. Okay, under discussion. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the resolution reaffirming our membership in the Wisconsin Bay Forest Development Area Consortium signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. County Administrator's report. No report this evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Payne. Uh, approval of attendance at other meetings or functions. Yes. Could we have a motion to approve the supervisors that attended this meeting, please? I will so move. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
Is there any other meetings attended? No. Okay. Review and approve vouchers. I'll Supervisor move Abler. Move to approve, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, Supervisor Abler. Is there a second? Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of uh, reviewing or the vouchers signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next meeting date? Um, Is that Monday, Tuesday? Yes. Uh, would September 21st work? I have one meeting, Mr. Chairman, uh, that with the uh, pray committee. Isn't that on Tuesday? It's on the Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, maybe the 21st, which is a Monday. And that's at 3.30 p.m., which I know there's a few th items on the agenda. It may be a little longer, so if we could do it 5 o'clock, that'd be just fine. Are you doing Tuesday or Monday? Or Monday is wide open. Okay. Yeah, let's do Monday. Okay. okay. Supervisor Procheck, is there a time that works best for you on that Monday? Just uh, three thirty. Okay. That's fine. Okay, that's, then that'll be at the twenty-first at three thirty. All right. And then motion to adjourn. Is there one? So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Abler. Is there a second? Support. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Uh, executive committee members, remember to sign the resolutions. Thank you.